What's up vapors? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick and today we're going to be taking a look at the Muramasa RDTA. That's right guys, this product comes to us all the way from Japan and this is Japan's first ever RDTA. Now this is by Mars Team, the same people that brought us the Yokozuna tank a couple months back. I did a review on that one as well. And uh, this thing is really cool. I really like this little uh, small form factor design. But before we get into the video, I would like to state my intent by saying that I did receive this product for free for the purpose of doing this video review. However, it has no monetary value to me, which means my opinions on it will remain honest and unbiased. With that being said, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to the people over at Mars Team for their continued support. So thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive down to the close-up view, talk about some specs, and take a better look at this thing. All right, guys, so here we have the Muramasa tank by Mars Team. Now, before we get into it, I wanted to tell you a fun little tidbit here. Uh, apparently, Muramasa, the name comes from Muramasa Sengo, who is a famous swordsmith who founded the Muramasa school and lived during the Muromaki period from the 14th to the 16th century in Japan. I thought that was kind of cool. They put a little bit of culture into this and uh, give me a, gives me a chance to tell you guys a fun little story. There you go. On the inside of the lid, we have a little kind of basic basic quick start guide really doesn't give you much information kind of would have liked to have seen this kind of fold out or something like that and give you something of a you know parts list and maybe how to break it down and put it back together and things like that but unfortunately that's not the case um, it comes in this nice little tin and this little package here kind of a gift box sort of thing and it's got this really rigid foam in there which is nice I absolutely love the packaging on this thing here very classy looking so we have our Muramasa tank itself, which we're going to get into in just a second here. We also have a nice wide bore, kind of uh, sort of like a chuff style drip tip that threads right in. And I'll show you how that works in just a second here as well. Um, there you go. Just kind of giving you an idea of what the bore looks like there. Pretty good wide bore tip. And last but not least, we have our bag of parts. Unfortunately, they don't give you any extra screw heads. I thought they would give you at least a set of screws in there. However, that's not the case. No tools, no nothing like that. No extra much of anything. It gave you basically a set of O-rings. So if you happen to break an O-ring or anything like that, you need to replace it. You've got a spare set. All right, guys. So here you can see the Murmasa tank in all its glory. Let's just go ahead and spin it around real quick for you. I like the little kind of V design design on the side there. It kind of reminds me of a Vicious Ant product. And there you go. You have your logos, Muramasa on this side and Mars Team on this side. I just feel like those are a little bit out of place. I don't know. I kind of would have liked to have seen those maybe above the airflow or something out of the way, maybe engraved in there or something like that. But yeah, it's just kind of printed on the tank and makes it look a little bit more cheesy. Uh, otherwise, the tank section as well as the airflow section and the drip tip are all made out of, uh, I believe, it's acrylic it didn't really come with any fax sheets or anything like that so I'm kind of uncertain on a few of these things here but you can see the bore of the drip tip as well as the single o-ring on this side here uh, not the tightest drip tip I've ever seen I would definitely avoid picking your mod up by the drip tip itself because I feel like you're gonna drop it but um, yeah would have liked to have seen that a little bit tighter uh, or maybe a dual o-ring on there would definitely do the trick um, there's the airflow section there uh, you can adjust it and it's matched on the other side however there is no single coil airflow option so it's dual coil only for this thing here uh, let's just go ahead and take off the top cap real quick um, now this is where it gets kind of interesting because this is the only way you can actually use this wide bore tip now this thing threads right into here just like that and that's the only configuration where you can use the wide bore tip. You cannot use it with the airflow control section, which is a little bit unfortunate because maybe someone out there would like to be able to control their airflow and use a wide bore tip. Um, personally, I think the airflow is just fine the way it is, but hey, that's just me. Um, it's a little bit tightly threaded on there. I mean, yeah, the threads are pretty thin and I just kind of uh, worry about it sometimes, but um, maybe you guys are a little bit more careful than myself. Um, there you go. You can see the inside of that chimney there. Just kind of a, a slight chamfer at the top, which is kind of nice. Kind of shoots the airflow straight up. 
And there we have the gold plated deck. Now this gold plating seems a lot nicer and a lot classier than some of the other Chinese gold plating that I've seen in the past, such as the Azroth. This just feels like it's a little bit higher quality. The screws are also gold plated there. You can see those. And the uh, post holes are probably about three millimeters. They're, they're pretty massive uh, post holes. Uh, as you can see, two posts, one hole per post, and uh, you can use this in either dual or single coil configuration. Uh, taking a look here, you can see the white dots right there and there. That's actually blocking off two of the wicking holes there. How you can change that is if you unscrew the deck, you can just simply unscrew it like that. The threads are buttery smooth. Um, this piece actually slides out. I believe this is made out of either Delrin or acrylic. Not quite sure on that. Uh, it was not specified in any of the uh, information that I received. And then you can just reinstall that like so. And there you go, you have it in dual coil configuration, which is kind of nice. I really like that. Uh, having the deck being able to come out like that is also a good thing for cleaning. One other thing that makes it good for cleaning is if you screw the uh, atomizer onto a mod, let's do that right now, you can actually just keep turning it right and that's gonna actually take off this little um, section here, which then you can clean it out really nice and easily. This uh, acrylic piece pops right out, which obviously that would make for very easy cleaning. It just fits right back in. And uh, you can clean up this section as well, which is definitely a nice touch. I like cleaning my tanks out usually like once a week. I'll break all of my tanks out and clean them all up and, uh, you know, maybe throw a new build on there as well. Uh, but that just is uh, reverse threaded, so you screw that on left uh, counterclockwise, and there you go. It's all set. You can clean it up real nice. So another really cool thing about this device is how you fill it. Now, there's a gap about one or two millimeters all the way around the build deck here, which is really nice because you can just stick your dripper right down on the side, give it a squeeze, and you're going to be able to fill this thing no problem. Uh, that's so cool because on the other side, it's going to let the air escape, which means it's not going to give you a big bubble and spill over the side or anything like that. I was able to fill this thing up uh, in no time flat using a full size, you know, regular glass dripper, and I didn't need any extra equipment, which is definitely a nice touch. So, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and pop everything back together here and we'll give you a final look at it. So here you can see the bottom and the little indentations there. I really don't feel like that affects its performance whatsoever. I just think it's for decoration or something like that. But anyways, that's about all the information I have to give you guys. I didn't receive any fact sheet or anything like that, and it's really hard to come by any actual specs on this device. So that's what I know. Let's go back to the main screen, have a quick vape on this thing, and we'll talk about it some more. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the close-up section of this video. Now let's talk about some of my personal thoughts on this device, some pros, some cons, and whether or not I believe it's worth purchasing. Starting it off today with some pros, and my first pro is that it has a nice high-end styling. I really like the looks of this thing. It's absolutely gorgeous. I kind of like the kind of goldish, yellowish kind of accents on it. Just kind of sets it apart from any other sub-tank that's out there right now. And, you know, even all the way down to like the subtle little engravings on it and stuff like that, I really like it. It looks classy. It looks like it deserves to be on a high-end box mod. I talked about that in my vlog, uh, this past vlog that I did, and I really like it. So there you go, that's my first pro. My next pro is that the airflow is smooth and quiet. As you probably heard, when I'm puffing on this thing, it's nice and quiet. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and take one more rip off of this thing and I'll show you what I mean. And now just for comparison's sake, I'm just gonna take a rip off of this Ego One Mega. So hopefully you guys could hear the difference between the two tanks. Obviously I know there's a big difference between an RDTA and a sub tank. Uh, the RDTA being a wide open kind of deck similar to an RDA, comparing that to a sub tank is almost like apples to oranges, but I just felt like you guys could use a nice comparison there. But anyways, moving forward, we are, have our next pro, which is the great machining. The machining on this is very high quality. I feel like there's a little bit higher precision that goes into the Japanese tanks rather than the Chinese tanks. I feel like 
the quality control might be a little bit better, and just everything seems to fit nice and snug and smooth, which is great. Absolutely love uh, everything about the machining to this one here. It just feels like it's high quality. And my final pro is that it's a dream to build on. Honestly, this thing can't be easier to build on. You just stick your coils through, tighten them down, straighten them up, and you're pretty much good to go right from there. Uh, wicking this thing is a breeze as well. You just kind of stick your cotton through there, tuck it down into the little holes that they provide. You can even take the deck out all the way, uh, pre-tuck it into those little slots, and then reinstall the deck, which I found to be pretty easy to do as well. Uh, you just dangle your cotton right down into the tank and it wicks no problem. I'm vaping this thing at 60 watts right now and I could probably even bump it up a bit higher and it's wicking absolutely perfectly. So there you go, there's the pros, let's move on to some cons. All right, you guys, I do have some cons to mention about this device here. My first being that it's very hard to line up the airflow. Now, normally when I'm working with an RDA or something like that, uh, it's very easy for me to see the airflow control actually shutting off the airflow holes. Uh, in that, it's working with two pieces of metal going over the top of each other, and normally you can see the contrast really well, whereas this one here with a dark colored plastic underneath, it's really difficult for me to actually see the difference between opening up the holes and closing them. I can't really see uh, uh, the parts that are actually blocking off the airflow. Maybe that's just my own problem. I'm not sure. Maybe you guys won't experience the same thing, but I just felt like mentioning it because I've had that issue more than once. So my next con is that it seems like the uh, wide board drip tip could strip easily. The threads on it are very, very small and very fine. And I just feel like if you accidentally go to screw that thing in and it's not completely 100% perfectly level and uh, ready to go, then you're gonna be able to strip it no problem. Now, I would like to see a slightly chunkier thread on that, but honestly, I don't think there's a whole lot of room on this little top cap here to fit threading, which is probably the reason why they made those threads so thin. So. Uh, maybe either that or a, maybe just an o-ring or something like that on the wideboard tip I feel like that would solve a lot of problems my next con is the low juice capacity now uh, obviously if there is the bigger tank for it that might be coming out I'm not really sure again but uh, yeah if there is a bigger tank then that would solve this issue but as of right now this thing only holds two mils of juice now you and I both know that two mils of juice probably isn't gonna last all day you're probably gonna be filling this thing about five six times a day to be honest honest with you, especially if you, this is your only tank or this is the only one that you have with you, uh, you're definitely going to be filling it pretty often with a low two milliliter juice capacity. Next up we have the logo takes away from the aesthetic. Now uh, right on the front and on the back there you have Mars Team and Muramasa and it's in white printing. I just don't think that kind of matches with the whole aesthetic that they have going on. Other than that, I absolutely the, love the look and design of this whole thing, but I really wish they would have maybe uh, etched it in, maybe above the airflow section or something like that, and not just printed it on the barrel of the uh, little undercap here. So I just feel like that's kind of an unfortunate design. I definitely think they could have done it a little bit better. But then, then again, that's a very subjective con. And finally, it's small compared to everything else on the market. Now, as I mentioned with the low juice capacity, I just really feel like they could have beefed this thing up to 24 uh, millimeters in diameter and just made the whole thing 24 all the way through. Maybe made the top cap even a little bit bigger to fit some bigger builds in it. Uh, just this thing beefed up would be amazing. I feel like uh, they should should come out with another version of it where it's bigger and has a bigger build deck and more juice capacity and everything like that. I just think that would fit better in the current market. Uh, other than that though, I really feel like this, the uh, Muramasa tank is a excellent design. I really like the form factor of it, but I just want to see it bigger. All right, you guys, let's talk about whether or not I believe this device is worth purchasing. Now, I don't know the price point on this device here. Uh, I didn't see it in the email that they sent me. I can't find it online. All the websites that I've seen are in other languages that I'm unable to translate, so really not sure how much this thing is gonna cost, but what I can tell you is if this thing is about on the 40 to $45 price point, I feel like it would be a worthwhile addition to your kit, especially if you're a mini mod owner. If you have something like the Mini Volt by Council of Vapor or the Vapresso Target Mini or something like that and you want a good tank to go on top of it without being too big and clunky or uh, anything like that, then you definitely wanna pick up one of these 
those Muramasa tanks for yourself. I really feel like it has a lot of really cool features in it, and for such a small form factor device, I think it actually rips pretty good. So there you go, take from that what you will. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. That about does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Of course, leave me comments in the box below of what you think of the uh, Muramasa tank, whether or not you want to purchase one for yourself or anything else you guys want to talk about down there. I'd love to discuss it with you. Of course, check out the advocacy links I have in the description. Make sure you fight for your right to vape. You don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. And also check me out on my different social medias. I have Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you follow me on there. Like my page on Facebook. Check out my Snapchat. And if you want to give me a couple of bucks on Patreon, that would be awesome as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are the best. And as always, vape on.